Folks, I'm out here with uh, Ian Tafoya, who has been uh, an incredible warrior in Denver for some some long time. And um, Ian, what's up this morning? What are you guys up to? We're here at Benedict Fountain Park where we gather weekly with the headwaters protectors. Um, we're about protecting the water, which means cleaning up the, ch the trash and the litter that gets into our stormwater pipes. And it also means making sure people have access to water. So I don't know, this might be our, we're in five, six months now um, of during this pandemic, responding to the lack of services and, that are being provided by the government. And so we go and we clean up trash, we provide water, we wash their hands, we give them medics, we have hygiene supplies, we have water supplies, um, like water, reusable water bottles. Um, we get the trash cleared away. We're trying to remove the public health crisis and show the government that there is a better way. And that the better way is to hire people from the festival world, many of which are out here today, because we consistently and regularly provide safe camping for individuals who are looking to have fun. And we also know how to work with people who are having mental health crises without dealing with others. Wow, um, that's a hell of a mission. Tell me, um, what, why, what about, what does it mean to have safe camping? Well, I mean, if you go out to any of these encampments, which you can see pretty clearly, is that they are attempting to take care of their trash and to keep it in one place. But when it does not get picked up, it brings animals. Um, it piles up. I mean, there are situations where we've seen the city let the garbage pile up taller than a child. And then they use that as a juxtaposition for the, the traumatic sweeps. Wow. Um, you use the term water protectors. protectors. Tell me what the, the, the principle of that is. Well, you know, I'm Hickory Apache and Okay Winge, and the current leader of the Hickory Apache, his real big thing is talking about how water should be free to everyone. Okay. And that water is, of course, of the highest importance, especially if you live here in Colorado, you know, more than 20 states and Mexico get water from us. And so if we get it clean, it's our responsibility to make sure that uh, it's already bad enough. They're, they pull like 100,000 pounds of trash out of the Platte River every year. Mm. And so we invest all this money, think I 70, where they raise the taxes on everybody to build stormwater pipes. Yeah. Well, it just gets filled with trash. It does zero yeah. protection. We paid all these taxes for nothing and the water quality degrades. But the other important part is making sure everyone has water. And you know, when I ran for office in 2015, I ran on restrooms on trash service, on the basic amenities that human beings need and things that were accomplishable in four years. Now, fast forward to 2020, it's been five years. They built two public restrooms. We have no trash service. And in fact, um, our own government is violating people's human rights by letting sanitation get so out of hand um, that they use it to justify police. We choose compassion, not combat. I love it. I um, read the article about the sweep of Arkans Park and the three variables that uh, the police used or the public works to, to justify that was the effect of the uh, trash on the watershed, um, complaints from neighbors, and then, of course, safety. What, what would you say in response to those uh, concerns? Well, if you want to provide safety for the water, the number one thing you can do is provide trash service. So regularly picking it up from individuals, the human beings are going to be there anyways. The second one about complaints from neighbors. Well, guess what? They move these people so that they get the people can have their parking back. Um, they move these people. They're now on 20th and Market Street. This displacement just moves people around. It's a new set of neighbors to complain. It doesn't actually solve any of the problems. The problem that we're bringing forward of this like Green New Deal solution of putting workers back to work while helping individuals. That's our basic solution. And uh, what was the last one? Um, safety. Um, well, you know, safety. Safety can mean a lot of things to different people. I think if you're feeling safe with your belongings and other people, you might feel safer than you even do in a shelter. Uh, you know, again, we come back to that same said. idea of a solution of work, having us all work together nice. um, to provide safe camping for those individuals who shelters don't work for them. You use the term Green New Deal. I know that that was a platform mm -hmm. that Bernie and AOC and others have advanced. Where is that now in the, in the process of this new administration? Do you know? Well, um, the Green New Deal got some backlash from the right. And so centrists have brought forward an agenda they call the Thrive Agenda, very similar to the Green New Deal. Okay. Um, same concept of investing a lot of dollars, but just shifting away from that conversation. You know, these words are used, they're powerful. Um, Green New Deal united an entire generation. If they brand it something else, but we get the same solutions, That's I'm fine. okay with that. But I do want to talk just for a minute that we need to stop using the word sweeps. When we use the word sweep, we buy into a fluffy looking word that the government has used consistently. These are traumatic displacements. 
when I went to a sweep and I've only been to one, it was quite possibly the most traumatic community event I've ever been to. And all I could think about were my ancestors, like, uh, or the Cheyenne and Arapaho, where, you know, here we are just at the Sand Creek Massacre, of hundreds of people being woke at the break of dawn. The only difference here is they didn't kill anyone. Wow, wow. Um, I know you have been targeted by the city. Um, we know that activists are targeted by the city. If you had a chance to sit down with the um, Hancock administration, what, what would you ask them? If you, had a, if you had a meeting with Mr. Hancock on Monday, what would you ask him? Well, they have the power to house people immediately. It's a shame that they wasted it. You know, we have all these tax funded um, hotels, there's empty apartments, right? Let's come up with interim solutions and to call people in. Again, these people from the festival world, we could camp 21,000 people even in one location. But what I would say is these are opportunities to train resiliency. You know, every we've trained more than 100 individuals from our community for headwaters protectors. They now know how to run safe water systems. There's all sorts of things we can do to make this comprehensive. It doesn't just have to, one solution can solve a lot of problems together. And you know, Mayor Hancock, uh, I mean, he's been pretty much a coward when it comes to dealing with the homeless. He chooses combat and police and violence and displacement. None of this is working. And all I can think is when I was a child, um, all these shelters were here and the homeless problem wasn't as bad. You grew up here, Ian? Yeah, born and raised here in Denver, Colorado. And what I can say is that uh, people talk about how we just need to build, build, build to allow the market. Well, in my lifetime, all we've done is build towers, but the homeless problem's got it worse. So Look at please this. tell yeah. me how that works. And I just wanted you to know, the reason we picked this location and it served as a rally call for mutual acres now is because there is no water here. It's Benedict Fountain, no fountain park. And it, to us, it is a rallying cry and symbolism for the lack of access to water and basically resources. When I, um, when, when, when I was um, watching the Standing Rock movement and uprising, um, there was a whole, like, uh, theory around water keepers. Why is... Why is water so important? Water is life. There's nothing better. There's nothing else but water. Except for air. And we have a right to clean air too. Guess what? Clean air isn't even a protected human right under the United Nations. Clean water was only became a right in 2007. Yeah. So you know what? We're on the cutting edge of making sure these things are important to people. You know, you can only live a couple minutes without air. You can only live a couple days without water. You can only live a, a month without food, right? So you have to really think about why is it so important for yeah. humanity? Yeah. because we all need it and guess what a lot of this industry is powered by water too yeah the plastic industry is provided by water the brewery industry is powered by water agriculture is powered by water it is the most one of the most essential uh, elements and that's why indigenous people why we should all feel responsible last question um the cdc has issued an edict that even for folks who are houseless to shelter in place do not move folks who are houseless in um, this whole last week and when uh, the Arkin Park swept, it was about 24, 28 degrees. Why is the, 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 why is the mayor sweeping people when it's freezing and then sweeping people when it's been told that the public health... I can't answer any question for the mayor, but what I can tell you is it's unconscionable, it's inhumane. And what I have said to him in tweets is you have now joined the ranks of deniers of science like Donald Trump. Yeah. When you decide to travel and be a fucking hypocrite, then you join the tr you join Donald Trump. When you decide to clear people and not to provide basic human services or services, now you're a fucking fascist too. Fascism is alive and well. It's alive and well, even if you call yourself blue. Great. Thank you, Ian. Uh, we appreciate all the work join you've us always on done. Sundays. We're here every Sunday, 10 a.m., 10 to 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. Excuse me. Um, we provide all these basic services. You can find us on Instagram uh, at Headwaters Protectors with the nest. Awesome. All right, y'all. We'll see you out there. Peace. Thanks, Ian.